Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. What another beautiful and awesome day today to always be in the presence of the Lord. Another day right now to give him all the thanks right now, to give him all the praise right now, and to give him all the glory. We serve an awesome God. Yes, we do. We serve a mighty God. We serve a powerful God. We serve an amazing God. We serve a God who is the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. We serve a God who still sits on the throne. Hallelujah. And he still performs miracles and wonders each and every day in the mighty name of Jesus. He is still in the healing business. He is still in the blessing business. God is good all the time, and all the time God is good. And he is so worthy. Hallelujah. He is so worthy to be praised. Yes, he is. Every day and today to give him thanks and praise and glory. But I don't want you to do it because things are going good in your life. The sun is shining, or you want something, or you need him anything. But I want you to thank him and praise him for who he is and what he has done. I want you to start thanking him and praising him because you can't live without Jesus. You can't do it without Jesus. I want you to start thanking him and praising him because Jesus is your everything. I want you to start thanking him and praising him because you in love with him because he is your first priority. Not your second, not your third, but he is number one uno in your life. That's what made a person praise more sufficient is when your relationship with him it connects with you that's why praise is an everyday thing it's not an on and off switch thing it's not a seasonal thing it is an everyday thing because a lot of people didn't have the opportunity to wake up today a lot of people didn't have the opportunity to get out of the hospital bed because they plugged up to the ICU plugs, breathing machines. A lot of people don't have the opportunity to do what you can do right now today, my brothers and sisters. So every day when the Lord wakes you up, it's a blessing. And the first thing you should do is get on your knees and to say, thank you, Jesus. To say, thank you, Jesus. You are my everything to me, Jesus. Thank you for another day in life. Thank you, Father God, for air. Thank you, Father God, for breath. Thank you, Father God, for seeing me through this part of the day. Just want to say thank you. And if you have not welcomed Jesus to your life today, to your home today, and if you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus today, I want to encourage you right now today, please do so. He is waiting on you, and he is available. God is good all the time, and all the time, God is good. And he is so worthy. He is so worthy to be praised. Let us pray, my brothers and sisters. Heavenly Father God, we just come before you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And give me all thanks, give me all praise, give me all glory. We just thank you, Heavenly Father God, for who you are, what you've done, and what you're about to do. We thank you, Father God, how you're moving in our life. We thank you, Father God, how you order our steps. We thank you, Father God, for your guidance and your direction. We just thank you, Father God, for the love, Father God, that you continue to give us, God. We thank you, Father God, for your presence, Father God. We just thank you, Father God, for your grace and your mercy. We thank you, Father God, because we know that you never leave us nor forsake us. We thank you, Father God, for this word that we're about to receive. We thank you, Father God, for this powerful message today. That's going to keep us full today, keep us satisfied today. And there's no place, Heavenly Father God, that we'd rather be at right now today, Jesus, but right here in your house, right here in your sanctuary, Father God, lift you up with thanksgiving and praise. Father God, let your will be done today. Father God, let your words go out and you should not return my board today. Father God, allow your love to move through this place. Allow your presence to move through this place. Allow your angels to join us in praise and worship, Father God, in this place. Father God, this is your time. This is your moment, Father God, that you're about to show up, that you're about to show out. I believe and I declare today, Father God, that someone's going to be healed today. Someone's going to be delivered today. Someone is ready to get their life over to you right now today, Father God. And the angels are already rejoicing in heaven right now. And you will. You should get all the thanks and all the praise and all the glory for Father God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Heavenly Father God, this is your house. The house that you built on solid ground. The house that you built on solid foundation. The house that cannot be moved, shaken, or bothered. 
Heavenly Father, Abba Father, you are welcome right now. You inv you're invited right now today to enter to the house of the Lord, right here in your sanctuary right now, right here on your YouTube channel, right here on your platform, right here in my sister's home, right here in my sister's life, right here in my brother's home, right here in my brother's life. Heavenly Father God, I'm asking you right now today to fill us up more of the Holy Spirit right now today, Jesus, because we want more of you and less of ourselves. Continue to fill our cup of Heavenly Father God, that it continue to overflow, Father God. I'm asking you, Father God, to soften our heart right now. I'm asking Father God to speak to us right now today. I'm asking Father God to reveal yourself to us right now. I'm asking Father God for a sign right now. I'm asking Father God for a miracle right now. I'm asking Father God to restore whatever the enemy tried to, tried to steal from us right now today, Father God. Father God, I'm asking you for a word for my brothers and sisters right now. I'm asking you, Father God, to lift us up right now. Father God, I'm asking you, Father God, to speak to us right now today, Jesus, because we need to hear from you today, Father God. Make it plain and clear, Father God, that we understand everything, what you're trying to show us and what you're trying to tell us, Father God. Glory be to God. Holy Spirit, you're welcome right now. You're invited right now today to enter to the house of the Lord right now, right here in this sanctuary right now, right here on this YouTube channel right now, right here on this platform right now, right here in my brother's home, right here in my brother's life, right here in my sister's home, right here in my sister's life. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to intercede and intervene right now. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to comfort us right now because you are a comforter. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you to quiet our thoughts, quiet our mind right now so we can hear your soft, still voice right now. Holy Spirit, I'm asking you right now today to move through this place right now. I'm asking you to touch us right now. Allow us to catch the Holy Ghost fire through this sermon, through this service right now. Glory be to God. Heavenly Father God, please forgive us for our sins, known and unknown right now. Wash us through your blood right now. Clean us as white as snow right now. Heavenly Father God, I want to say thank you right now today for forgiving us for our sins. Thank you, Father God, for not remembering our sins anymore. Thank you, Father God, for the clean slate. Thank you, Father God, for the opportunity. Thank you, Father God, for coming through. Thank you, Father God, for understanding. Words cannot explain how thankful, how grateful, how honored and blessed I am to pray, praise and have fellowship with all my brothers, all my sisters today, Father God, and one body of Christ today. Heavenly Father God, words cannot explain that we're available for praise, that we're available for service, that we're available for the kingdom, but most of all, Jesus, that we're available for you. And Heavenly Father God, before I get started, it's something that's always in my mind about you. It's something that stays in my spirit about you. It's something that stays on the fruit of my tongue and the fruit of my lips about you. And I just got to tell you how I really feel about you, Jesus. I just can't thank you enough, 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 Jesus. I just can't thank you enough. That's why I praise you the way I do because I can't thank you enough. That's why I glorify you the way I do because I can't thank you enough. That's why I magnify and shout out your holy name the way I do, Jesus, because I can't thank you enough. That's why I pour my heart out to you every day, Jesus. Because I can't thank you enough. That's why I'm in love with you the way I am, Jesus. Because I can't thank you enough. That's why I shout out glory, hallelujah. Because I can't thank you enough, Jesus. I just 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 can't thank you enough. And if you're ready for God's word, let the church say amen. Hallelujah. God is so good. He is so awesome. He is so amazing. Yes, he is. But I'm going to keep it real with you and be honest with you. Everybody says that they want something real. They say they're tired of being with this type of person or living with this type of person. They crowd to God, plead with God, even be with God. And soon when the real man come, they take out running. They push the real man away. The moment when the real woman come, they take out running push her away. The moment the real friend come, they push him or push her away or the real job come. But the end of the day, they running from their self. Because what's end up happening when the real shows up, the fake that's in them takes off. They say they want this, they say they want that. But when they come, they don't know how to handle the real because they're so used to the fake boyfriend, the fake baby daddies, the fake baby mamas, the fake friends. That's what they're used to with some real, some authentic come. They don't know what's going on. They think they're about to get exposed because your realness, oh, help me understand, Jesus, is going to show them who you really are. That's why they can't look at you in your face. That's why if you look at it, if you notice, you thinking, there's something wrong with you. But he's pushing you away because why? And they might think it's too good to be true. 
what's in front of them. They say, this man really can't be with me. This man really don't want to be with me. Do you know who I am? Do they know what kind of flaws I have? Do you know what I'm up against? Do he know what I'm up against? Do she know what I'm up against? And when they see that, they push you away. That's what God said, I'll never tell you what I'm going to give you. Because if God was to tell you what he's going to give you right now today, neither one of us would believe him. But I can tell you right now today, my brothers, I can tell you right now today, my sisters, what you're going through right now today, it has nothing to do with you at all. What they see is realness. They can't handle the realness because they, they ain't never been with nobody that was real. If that woman said that she'd been with a man that was real, she would know how to handle you. And the reason why she can't handle you because she's so used to being with the fake people. Two people that's fake, they go hand in hand, but they'll never see eye to eye. But a person that's fake and a person that's real, what you will bring to the table, they can't handle that. They are thinking that you're going to lead them. They are thinking that you are judging them. They are thinking something totally different than what you are thinking, my brothers. And I know you get mad at it. I know you just feel like it's difficult. But they are running from their own self. It has nothing to do with you, my brothers. It has nothing to do with you, my sisters. Everybody said they want real until the real comes. And when they come on their doorsteps, they say, this can't be true. Uh-uh. This man right here want me. This woman right here want me. This job right here want me. This person right here consider me as a friend. Oh, no. I'm used to friends like this right here. I'm used to women like this right here. I'm used to dudes like this right here. But so when you came, you came with a whole totally different package. You came with a whole totally different outlook. You came with a whole totally different outcome. See, that mess with them. They bothered them because they wasn't used to it. They never had a man like you. They never had a woman like you. They never had a friend like you. They never had a job that took care of you and they treated you employee, but they treated you more like a CEO. They weren't used to that. They used to people dogging them out and mistreating them. And they thought they was love. They thought they was loyal. It's something wrong with him, right? Yes, it is. It's something wrong with her, right? Yes, it is. And that's why you're getting all this backlash from them. That's why they never want to be around you as much. Because in their mind, they still think it's too good to be true. But look where you at. It's hard to push a man away when he is rooted in the word of God. It's hard to push a woman away that is rooted in the word of God. It's hard to push a friend that is rooted in the word of God. It's hard to push him away. It's hard to push her away. Sometimes you gotta you gotta know what you asking God for. Because when he give it to you, you shouldn't know how to handle it. But you don't. You really don't know how to handle it. See, the Lord already knew that you were going to be able to handle it. That's why if he would have told you that he's going to bring you so-and-so on this day right here, you would have told him, man, God, you playing. Not him, not her, not this job right here. That's why he never tell you how it's going to come. He never tell you how the box is going to be shaped. He never tell you how the present is going to be designed just for you. He never tell you that. He just said, just trust him. You think about all the time you was crying out to him. You was pleading out to him. You had people in the people in the church praying for a God, a God-fearing man, a God-fearing woman, or a good friend, or a good job. And it came. It came right now. You didn't know how it was gonna come, but it came. It might ain't it might ain't come when the time that you needed it, but it came right on time. God ain't made no mistake when he sent that man to you, my sisters. God ain't made no mistake to you, my brother, when he sent that woman to you. God ain't made no mistake when he sent that friend to you. God ain't made no mistake when he sent that job to you. Because we serve a God who don't make mistakes. We serve a God who don't have time to make room for lies, neither. He gave you what you asked for. 
He gave you what you prayed for. He gave you what you cried for. And you couldn't handle the real package. You so used to the, the beat down and the damage and the fake package. You felt like that was a, you felt like that was a, what kind of package that you always gonna have for the rest of your life. But you seen this package, this ordinary package. It just came out of nowhere. And it came. In the moment you untied that package, it was everything that you asked for, everything that you prayed for. But we seen the realness come out of him. Oh, help this thing, Jesus. We seen the realness come out of her. We seen the realness come out of that friend. We seen the realness come out of that package. You thought it was too good to be true. So what you start doing, you start pushing him away. You start pushing her away. Because why? You was running from your own self. You was running from your own self. Everybody said they want real to the real come. When the real come, the real person saw who you really was. See, you was pretending to be something, but the real already saw who you really was from day one. It wasn't a surprise to him, and it sure wasn't a surprise to her. But it's time for y'all to get y'all mind together. Stop asking God for something if you can't handle the real. Stop crying out to people and ask people to pray for certain things if you can't handle the real. And my brothers and my sisters, I know it makes you feel some type of way. But in their mind, they'll never tell you this. They're always going to think that you are too good to be with them. That's why they're pushing you away. That's why they're doing what they're doing. That's why they're acting out right now. They're so used to the fake. Their realness in you is bothering them right now. And every time they see you, they can't look at you. Can't never give you eye contact. One minute they want to be around you, the next minute they don't. It's because why? It is something inside of you that is bothering them. When someone is fake, they seem like it's genuine to them. They're used to that. But someone is real, someone is loyal, with a kind and giving heart like you, they can't handle that. They can't handle it. And it's bothering them right now. It's messing their mind right now. I know somebody's going through it right now. I know somebody's facing this situation right now. But at the end of the day, my brothers and sisters, they got nothing to do with you. They running from their own self. Until they realize what is real and what is fake, they're going to continue to run like their fall is gone. Eventually, one day, they'll get tired. And right now, they're getting tired right now. They'll never tell you that. Because at the end of the day, by you being so real, you still right there. You ain't went nowhere. But in their mind, they say, well, why he ain't left yet? Why she ain't left yet? They, they talk about old relationships to you. Whatever they're doing, they're trying to push you away. Think about when they bringing up old, old, old something old that you, you don't even want to hear it. They only talk about an old relationship just to see if you're going to move. They only talk about their last boyfriend just to see if you're going to get mad and say, you know what? <coughs> I can't do this no more. They only talk about their old girlfriend just to see what you're going to do. Say, you know what? I'm tired of this. You're going to be back, you're going to be back with her or their friend or their job when they realize that you ain't going nowhere. That's what it is. And they mind they still think it's too good to be true. And they come in at all kind of tricks. Just to push you away. But you ain't went nowhere yet. But they still running from their own self. They running from themselves. Tell them to tell them to stop being fake and be real once in a while. Because you're already real. You're already genuine. But I know I'm glad you asked me. Can you please turn your Bible to Habak? Chapter 1. And we're going to read verse 5. That's a book. Chapter 1. And we're going to read verse 5. And if you have your Bibles open, let the church say amen. Amen. For I am going to do something in your days that you would not believe even you were told. If God was to tell you right now today, my sisters, that young man that God brought to your life, that this is the man right here, 
It's going to take you and your kids. He's going to take it to a whole nother level. You still ain't going to believe him. And you're still going to keep pushing him away. Because why? You still think it's too good to be true. And you're still running from yourself. That's why God, the word of God say, if I was to tell you, that's why he never tell you how this man's design is. He'll never tell you how this man's going to look. he never tell you this man his shape. He's never going to tell you what this man's really, his whole purpose is for. He'll never tell you why this man, he brought this man into your life. Once you start running from yourself and realize this is something genuine, when you realize this is something real, when you realize something true, then you will see what God's going to do for you, my brothers and sisters. You will see it. See, you can't see it because you're still running from yourself. You ain't made peace with yourself yet because you were so addicted and so around the fakeness. When real come, you like, what in the world is this? I don't know what this is. This is a whole new world. This is a whole new life. This is a whole new vocabulary. I ain't used to nothing like this. That's why they mind they always going to think it's too good to be true. That you, my brother, you, my sister, want to be with them. They have not functioned yet. And they have not realized that you were sent by God to them. They can't see it yet. They can't fathom them yet. Because they're so used to being with the fake. They're nothing to do with you. They're just running from themselves. That's why they keep pushing you away. That's why they keep bringing up old, old situations. Thinking that you're gonna think you're gonna leave, but you ain't went nowhere. That's why I love about this verse. Why he said, but "I'm going to do something in your days." So he said, "I'm going to do something." He said, "I'm going to do something that's going to amaze you. I'm going to do something that's going to brighten you. I'm going to do something that if I was to tell you right now today, what I'm going to do for you." He said, "Y'all won't even believe me. Y'all tell me to my face that I was lying." If God was to tell you right now today, in the next couple of seconds, that someone's going to drop a check for y'all for fifty thousand dollars, y'all won't even believe me. Because why? You're so used to the lie, you're so used to the fate, but when the real come and present the 50000 you'll say, damn, no, nah, it's too good to be true. If God will tell you right now today, that man that you've been praying for, that you've been asking for, I'm about to send him to you. But I ain't going to tell you how he look. But I'm going to send him to you. And when he come, the first thing you're going to say, it's too good to be true. And what you're going to do, start pushing that man away. If God was to tell you right now today, my brothers, I'm going to see that woman that you've been praying for, that you've been asking for. And when that superwoman come right there to you, knock on your front door and say, here I am, the first thing you're going to say, it's too good to be true. This ain't her. And what you're going to do? You're going to push her away because why? You're running from yourself. If God said, I'm going I'm to have a job to call you, even though you didn't even plot for the job. But that job called you said, I found your resume. And you said, what resume? I ain't put one out there. But somehow, some way, this job found a resume with your name on it. And that job said, I'm ready to hire you to bring you on board tomorrow. Starting good pay with good benefits. You so used to working these, these lame jobs that when the good job come, you'll, you'll tell that job, no thank you because you're so used to this right here. That's what you're doing. And that's what a lot of y'all are doing right now today. You think it's too good to be true. Stop pushing away what God sent you. And the only reason why you pushing him away, the only reason why you pushing her away, the only reason why you pushing that friend away, the only reason why you pushing that job away is because you've run it from yourself because you're so used to the fake. But when the real come, you don't know how to handle it. You can say what you want to say, but that's all what it is. Because if you're used to the real, you better understand the real that's in front of your face. Now keep it real with yourself. Now you know exactly who I'm talking to today. Now it's time for you to be real with yourself and say, Jesus, yeah, that's me. That man you bought to me, I always gonna think it's too good to be true. I still don't think this man really wanna be with me, but this man has showed me and showed me over and over again. He ain't gave me no, no doubt. He ain't give me no real sign like he wanna be with me and my kids. But Jesus, why I'm still running? Ask Jesus to help you. Same thing go for you, my brothers. Ask Jesus to help you. Same thing go for you, my brothers and sisters, about their friend, about their job. Ask Jesus to help you. When you start running from yourself, you'll know what the real is. 
And if you like what you heard, you know this word is for you. Go on here, Jesus, and like that. Hit the subscribe button to us. Can you please pray on me? Lord Jesus, I ask of you to come into our life, to guide us, direct us, use us. I believe right now today in the mighty name of Jesus. If I was praying a simple little prayer that God has already working everything God in our life right now today. And if you ever want to get in contact with me or leave me a comment, my YouTube channel is Wiggers.alt. Always keep Jesus first place. Always seek him, always honor him. Always keep your eyes focused on Jesus because he is the author and the perfecter of your faith. Continue to trust him even though you don't see things happening. Continue to hold on to his unchanged by hands and please do not let it go. Continue to pick up your crosses and follow Jesus. Choose faith over fear. Always continue to pray for your fellow brothers and sisters. It doesn't matter if you know them. It doesn't matter if you ever seen their face. Prayer I help and prayer changes things. I'm always going to keep y'all in prayer, my brothers and sisters. The only thing that I ask y'all guys to do for me is continue to keep me in prayer and keep me lifted up to you. I'm serving in the cell to you. I love y'all. Stay blessed. In Jesus' glory, holy mighty name. Amen.